people, damaging their paint, ruining stuff. And so I'm excited to learn with the professional. But definitely this would impact the value of a trade-in. So Emily, have you ever used a polisher before? I haven't, and I'm very nervous about using one because I've heard horror stories about people damaging their paint, ruining stuff, and so I'm excited to learn with the professional and guidance to make sure I don't hurt anything. Okay, so what we're gonna be using is a five inch waffle pad. Now feel how stiff that pad is. Mm -hmm. Very stiff and hard. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we dampen it, it's gonna be super soft. The other part of a waffle pad is when we're polishing, we don't want to create any heat. Okay. Heat is our enemy. Okay. Pressure is our enemy. So you don't want to be doing this. Okay. Uh, and you've seen images of detailers and pictures of detailers and you've seen them in person. They're like this with the machine. Yes. Smell yeah. No. You're wailing on it. Yeah. No need whatsoever. Okay. Secondly, the waffle surface helps keep the surface cooler. Okay. And what we're going to be doing with this is just refining the paint. Okay. You don't have any deep scratches. You have all these little annoying swirls here and there. Yep. We're gonna be using a spray polish, which is also a little different. So gold standard polish. Most polishes, you put three or four pea-sized drops. Yep. So I'd have to pull this trigger three or four times to get the three or four pea-sized drops. Okay. With ours, it's a little different. So that's a pad washer. Okay. If you don't have one, and if you're polishing all the time, you need one. If you're only doing this once every three or four years, don't bother. You can actually take this, put it in a bucket of rinseless wash, mm -hmm. the pad, mm -hmm. squeeze it out a few times, put it back on your machine, it'll clean it almost as well. Perfect. Now, remember that one piece I dropped was I one pull of the trigger, right? Yep. Well, all we put on our pad is one pull of the trigger. That's it? So we're using a third to a quarter of the polish as everybody else. Instead of having three or four areas, three or four dots that are doing the work when it's we put the on the paint, way around the pad. we have the whole pad doing the work as soon as we touch it to the paint. When we touch it to the paint, we want to have this at a medium speed. So speed three, most of them have a one to six. Okay. So speed three, somewhere in the middle. And we want to use the trigger lock. Okay. The trigger lock is very important. Okay. They put it there for a reason. It's not just a decoration. And the reason it's there, if I'm holding the trigger, that basically locks my wrist and my elbow. Mm -hmm. So my range of movement is very poor. By using the trigger lock, I can put my hand wherever I want. And the machine, yes, it has a bit of weight to it, mm -hmm. but again, we don't need to worry about that. And we're not putting any weight against the machine. We're not trying to squeeze the pad. Let the machine do the work for Let you. Let the machine do the work. And you can see how hard I'm holding the machine. Yeah. Yeah. At least three fingers. Yeah, at least. And the goal is to keep the backing plate spinning. Okay. So this is a dual action machine. And dual action means a couple things. So you see it's going in an orbit. The, pound, the pad is round, yes. but when we turn the machine on it, it's on an eccentric. Yeah. So the drive of the pad isn't centered. And we have a bit of rotation as well. But if I stop the rotation, it just has that shaking motion. So if I'm putting weight on it, it's just going to have that shaking motion. And it's not going to have the rotation as well. Got and you it. notice how much smoother it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we want it to be smooth. We don't want to shake our bones. Got it. Then from there, I did three passes. So left, right, up, down, left, right, with about a 50% overlap. Okay. And see the pattern that the waffle pad leaves. It does. I, I do see it. Right. So if I stop the pad from spinning, see how different the pattern oh, is? Oh yeah. It's not doing different. as much work. So 
So let the machine do the work. Got it. So this is the dual action machine. Okay. We'll have you give this a try. All right. So before we do that, we'll wipe this off so you can see before and after. Perfect. So everybody likes a good before and after. Show. Absolutely. Flying in from the outside of the garage, <laughs> we have a rinseless dampened towel. Very nice. That makes the polish much easier and smoother to wipe off. Got it. So we're not working hard to remove it. We're not putting any pressure. Therefore, we don't have to worry about inducing other scratches. Got it. And then just dry towel to go in after? Yeah, so you're just buffing the excess liquid off. You're not removing any polish with this. It's a little brighter than before. Oh yeah. Now, what we did, we're not removing all the deep scratches, but we are making the paint a lot clearer. Whoa, you can see the line right there where you started. Yeah. Wow. Tell me if the light is good. So we've made a major improvement. Oh, yes. With very little effort. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the basic rules of polishing for DIY detail. Okay. You always want a clean pad. Okay. We never put dirty, or we never put clean polish on a dirty pad. Okay. So once you've done a section, you clean your pad. And cleaning the pad, this is from a company called Lake Country. They're in Wisconsin. Okay. Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. <laughs> so once we get it primed, if we go very slowly, you see, oh my gosh. not much, right? Yeah. Yeah. If we press quickly, holy crap, we can wet the ceiling. Yeah. We want to go quickly. Okay. So just two or three or four. And now you see how wet that pad is. Yeah, that is. And then we're going to keep it on the backing here. Okay. Coming out the back. Yeah. And then we just lift it up an eighth of an inch, just so it's not touching. Okay. And put this at its maximum speed. Okay. Now we're remove we've removed the excess liquid. Okay. The pad is just damp. Remember how stiff that pad was at yeah, the beginning? Yeah, I do. It's a totally different feel now. Right. And then the polish, we apply very easily. You don't want to stand back here, because then you'll get it all over the truck and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And the trigger sprayer, you need to pull it like you're angry at it. Okay. So with conviction, with force, with speed. Got it. So I'm just going to get the pad spinning slowly and one quick pull. Got it. We have it all over the pad? Yep. Off you go. There you go. So we're down to speed three. Yep. And then pull this and then push this in. Yeah, but first. put it against the vehicle before turning it on. Right. Okay. And turn it off before pulling it away. And to turn it off? Just push, hit the trigger again. Just hit the trigger again. Yeah. Okay. So pull it all the way in. Yeah. So one hand here will probably be a little more comfortable. Yep. So see how it's the backing plate is stalling? Uh, now it's ah, spinning. I see. So you want to keep the pad as flat as you can to the surface. And stand up, you don't have to uh, you don't have to smell the polish. <laughs> and you can actually hold the machine like this. That way now your shoulders are square. Yeah. You're not hunched over. So concentrate on keeping that pad flat against the surface. And when it stops spinning, that means you're not flat against the surface. Got it. You want to keep to a smaller area. Okay. You don't need to spread too far. Okay. So now I'll trade you. Alright. Damp towel. Okay. Actually, I want you to try removing it with a dry towel first. Alright. Just a little bit. Like, so, like removing tar. Right. Yeah. Now take the damp towel. Okay. 
just glides across that. Right. I'm gonna take a dry towel. Yep. And if you actually flip it to the short nap side, because it's a double-sided towel. Okay. You may find it's a little easier. Thick, fluffy towels have their place. Yeah. Usually as a blanket or <laughs> on the sofa, but uh, in detailing, they have their place, but not not as often as a low nap towel. Got it. Feels like I got it off pretty good. Yep. improvement but not a whole lot. A technique needs some work. Well you were always not always but oftentimes the pad wasn't rotating. Got it. Because you had a bit of an angle. So and starting on a vertical panel is the hardest panel to start on. Okay. So I gave you I gave you a challenge. But you met it admirably. Yeah. Now I'm gonna change tools on you. Okay. I'm gonna freak out every professional detailer by okay. putting a rotary in your hand. Alright. So same machine, same weight. Okay. But all this does, go around a circle. Okay. Same size pad, five inch pad, but this is a rotary jeweling pad. Okay. It's designed specifically for this machine. Okay. So even someone who's never used a rotary before is gonna end up with great results. All right. We never use a dry pad. Yep. So as you can see, it's just damp. Yep. Malleable. One spray of polish. All right. That's all you need. Now we're going to use it at the lowest speed possible. Okay. And I'll start over here. I'll just do a little section and then pass it off to you. All right. So the rotary, once again, trigger lock. Okay. The less you hold it, the easier it is. Wow. If you try to hold it, it's going to move you around. All I'm doing is making sure that it's flat. Now, you were in high school not that long ago. Very true. Remember the janitor going down the hallway with that big machine polishing yes. the floors? Yes. Okay. That's just a big rotary. Okay. And the janitor looked like, made it look effortless, yeah. right? He wasn't even holding on to the machine, one hand barely, a couple fingers. Yeah. That's all that was necessary. If he would have passed the controls over to a student, the student would be bouncing down the hallway off the lockers till they ran out of cord. Because the more you hold onto it, the more you have to manhandle it. The rotary is the same way. So this is the same way. The less you hold onto it, the smoother it's gonna be. And you can feel. So one thing we can do is put it just on a flat panel like this. Yep. And I can hold it perfectly still. If I tilt it up, it's gonna go that way. If I tilt it down, it goes that way. If I tilt it sideways, it's just all over the place. But once I find that equilibrium, now I have a beautiful glossy finish. Wow. It's easy to move, easy to glide. It just literally glides over the paint. I can place it wherever I want to simply by putting the tiniest bit of lean to it. So even over contours like this. Yeah. And I can go right up against that plastic. I'm not worried about damaging the plastic. I can actually polish the plastic. Wow. It's not going to leave white marks on the plastic. Cool. So we have that body line here. Yep. You'll notice how the waffle pad is getting in all of here. I do. Yeah. And this is admittedly quite a heavy machine. Okay. There are some on the market that are a lot lighter. The battery makes it heavy. Okay. So, I'm giving you probably one of the worst ones to start with. Off you go. Top side? Yeah, right here. do it on the top to begin okay. with. Just so you get a feel for the balance of the machine. Start here and then yeah. trigger and then lock. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, so hold it by underneath the battery. Okay. And see how you're leaning it? Yeah. So you want to lift this up a little bit. Okay. Cool. But once you find that balance spot, then all you have to do is glide it left or right. 
Oh. Ist so. So it might be easier to put the second hand here. Okay. Oh. I got it. So no pressure? Nope. We're just gliding it along the surface. I see what you mean about leaning it now too. You can, yeah. I can choose the direction I want to go just by. So it doesn't take long to get comfortable with the machine. Yeah. So if I want to go this way. Now another thing I want to show you okay. is detailers think the rotary is going to burn paint. Okay. So, why do you like Audi so much? I like Audi so much because I think they have a really cool history and how all these different brands came together. I also really like how they're kind of an understated brand. It's something that isn't always meant to be like really flashy and in your face. It's right. something that has luxury, sportiness, and it's just really fun to drive it. Right. So, we've been holding this here for about a minute, right? Yeah. Let's see how hot it is. Okay. So beside it, if you want to take the gun there and read it, it Sylvie has? It has 82 degrees, 81 degrees. Okay. Now, where I'm holding the machine? Yes. Let's read that there. 106. 106. Mm -hmm. So we went up 30 some degrees. Mm -hmm. Any automotive paint manufacturer, they their upper limit is 30 degrees. Okay. So we almost attained that. But also I didn't move for a minute. Correct. Something that's not going to happen in the real world. Correct. So other than my spot there, mm -hmm. let's see if you caused any swirls. So we wipe off the polish residue, then we get rid of the water. Or actually the Winslow solution in our case. Whoa. There's no way there's any swirls on this. Wow. That's awesome. So we clean the pad, we remove the excess moisture, we add a spray of polish, and it's all yours. Alright. Bring it back to oh, you're down to Yep. Low speed it will go. Okay. Apply this first and yep. then, then turn it on. Okay, then sideways was a little easier. And is that level? Look about level? You'll see as soon as you start it up. Got it. Oh. So here, I want you to put your hand here. Okay. Because of the battery, yeah. That way you you won't hit the paint with it. Got it. Now that's a very deep waffle pad. Okay. And I want you to notice something. Yeah. Stop it for a second. You went down onto the trim. I did. You notice that it polished the trim and the paint right in that corner mm -hmm. without you having to maneuver the machine around. Yeah, it did. Off you go. Finish your section. All right. Move your right hand under there. Yeah. And the wider your stance, the easier it will be for you to balance the machine. Got it. And just work within the width of your shoulders. Okay. If 
because every time you stretch to an extremity, you're turning your back and then it's hard to control the machine. Got it. So the rotary is a very difficult machine to control. Lots of vibration, it's hard. You're stressed out, I can tell. That's, no. That smile is, you know, <laughs> it's a smile of stress. Yeah. The rotary is not that difficult a machine to master. Just takes a few minutes of practice, maybe a little longer. But once you get it, you get it. That leveling is, yeah. is unlike anything else. That was the key. So there you go. All right. So we showed you a dual action machine, mm -hmm. showed you a rotary. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about people doing this at home. Yes. And so, I've never done this before. Right. But you're not going to go out and buy a $500 machine no. to get a $1,000 return on your trade-in. No. So we have another machine that we can use that you've seen before. You might even okay. have one at home. We have our cord. Okay. We have our little machine. I may have pumped it one too many times. <laughs> We've spun out our pad. Yep. Same pad that we had on the other machine. One spray of polish. Okay. I'll trade you machines. Thank you. This one's a lot lighter. Yeah. And they're under $30. And that's awesome. Which spot would you like me to do? Wherever you want to go. That one? Oh, come over to the door. Do a spot on the so door? So you want to choose a section that's comfortable. Okay. Which, very easy to determine what that is. a good section size. Okay. <laughs> You want to keep it flat against the surface, okay. the core over your shoulder, that way your shirt's not scraping up against the vehicle. So your arms can go down without your knees. Okay. You don't have to be looking at it. Easy enough? Easy enough. Or a damp towel. Trade you for a dry one. Check the results there. Still got some of the polish on there. Yeah. So we still have a few of those scratches because mm -hmm. it's a less aggressive machine. Got it. But we've reduced them considerably. Yes. If we look from there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So if we look from there to there, there's a vast improvement. Oh yeah. Now we're going to do something a little different. Okay. This is a pre-sale detail. We're not going to invest in a ceramic coating. We're not going to go all out to make it perfect. We want to make it glossy, slick, 
and we want it to look good. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add a little more polish here. So again, no pressure on the machine. Okay. I'm literally just gliding the machine along the surface. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to use our damp towel again with the rinseless wash. And once we've done that, this is where we switch it up. Okay. One spray of ceramic gloss. It's going to act as a drying aid. So you saw how difficult it was to dry before? I did. Now try it. Oh my gosh. Way easier to dry now. Yeah. I felt like before I had to work at it, this you can just glide a towel along. Yeah. Now what does it look like? Well, you still have a little wet there. Whoops. Could be our towels getting a little damp. Oh yeah, a lot better. You can tell here's where we didn't do it. So, you're a used car buyer, mm -hmm. what do you think? Oh yeah, I mean, if the paint looked like that, that would be a whole different level. Probably consider that more. Yeah. So now we've determined what we need to do. Mm -hmm. We need to polish it, hit it with a damp towel, ceramic gloss, and a dry towel. There we go. There's four of us here. It's not going to take a long time. No, Which not. machine do you want to use? Good question. Honestly, I felt most comfortable with the rotary. The rotary? Yeah. Someone who's never detailed before is more comfortable with the rotary. I was. Yeah. So the rotary is yours. All right. feel a lot more comfortable with it. Yeah, and you've done what, the door? I know. Yeah. And every time I get like stressed, I just go, okay, like go back to the, like one let, or two fingers. Let go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've polished half the side of the truck almost. You're yep. Almost there. Yep. What are your thoughts so far? It's, when you know, I, I, I wanted to stop you halfway through because even just like half my door panel that I did, I was like, oh my gosh, it's starting to glide. And then after I did this bottom portion, I challenged myself and started going up. Right. And I, I was comfortable with it. I could do it really easily. So I, it's a lot easier when you get the hang of it and just like going slow. The biggest thing was that resonated with me is when you said, uh, make sure it's level. Make yeah. Make sure when it's not fighting you and the little inputs you can give it, just kind of pivot and let it. And so every time I'd like, I feel like, oh, it's getting stiff, it's fighting me. Okay. Let go. What am I doing? Yeah. So I'd let go. I'd go back to the two fingers, let it kind of glide yeah. for me. But I, I, I enjoyed that. That was fun. And Ben, you, you've had previous experience polishing. Yes, but not with the rotary. Right. What do you think of the rotary versus the DA? You know, I like it. It's certainly something different. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's been a fun experience. Right. You know, I'm very curious to see the results. They'll be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Uh, one you want to do it or? Oh, tire? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you liked it before. So. I do. <laughs> I'll trade you. Overspray? Like that? Yeah. Yeah. Emily, what do you think? I think it turned out great. I can tell you it didn't even look this good when it was new. So you're the car expert. You, you buy cars, you sell cars. Uh, how much did we increase the value? At least 500 to 1,000, knowing the fact that this vehicle does not have to get buffed and all that and cleaned up when it's brought back to their detail department. Excellent. Now, you tried polishing for the first time in your life. I did. Yeah. What machine would you buy if someone gave you a budget to buy a machine? I would buy the corded rotary because that was the easiest for me to balance and work with. Um, I, I know my husband didn't like it only because he didn't like the cord around his shoulder. Right. However, it was so much easier for me to balance and like being shorter and in like the center of my gravity. Yeah. It was way easier to balance and then just move that. I felt like the one with the bigger battery was a little more cumbersome. Okay. And why rotary versus DA? Uh, I felt like the DA was, I, nope, couldn't get that one down with a, a nice clean rhythm with it. I felt like 
the rotary i could just once i got that balance yeah. I, it was just clean moving swinging yeah. back and forth and the finish of the rotary you guys inspected this with yep. the light you yep. wiped it down how many swirls and you know halos do you yeah. have from polishing i'd say we only have you know zero from polishing okay yeah good so for those of you that are afraid to try a rotary we have someone that never polished before she tried both a da and a rotary and preferred the rotary i did yeah and the finish speaks for itself it does we've never had a mirrored finish on this truck before yeah yeah it's black it is beautiful and it's got a really dirty interior it does We'll see you in the next one. In the meantime, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. We're always happy to answer. Don't forget to subscribe to DIY Detail and... Emily the Audi Nerd. See you in a little bit.